our life is a beautiful gift and what we make out of our life is our beautiful gift to god our life is a beautiful gift of god and what we make of our life is what we do what we give it to god the bible teaches us when god created man in his own goodness with full of life and when he falls he became the savior god becomes a giver of life and giver of salvation having received the blessing of god life and salvation god wants man to be his representative on this earth to bring life and salvation to the world that's why in isaiah 43 verse 17 it is written that god has a great dream that through him through us the praises of god has to be proclaimed that's why we read in the book of colossian chapter 1 verse 13 from the darkness god has called us into the marvelous light god has called us that we may bring forth his praises his glory we will bring life out of this world we will bring life out of our humanity we will bring salvation to this whole world you and i are the hope of god that's why in the book of ephesian chapter 2 verse 20 onwards you are the masterpiece of god god has chosen you that through you jesus wants to build up his kingdom his life his dreams the lord has so many dreams he says i have come that you may have life life in all its fullness john 10 10 he said to the people i have come that you may have life with all its fullness having received life fully by walking in fully where you enter jesus said in first john chapter 5 verse 12 he who has the son son means jesus has the life of the son if our focus is on the lord and we will have the life of god yes he who has the son has the life of the son he who doesn't have the life of jesus he who doesn't have jesus his whose focus is not on the lord you don't get the lord but your mind is scattered jesus said in matthew chapter 12 verse 30 he who gathers with me he who focuses on me gathers together he who doesn't focus on me scatters he who doesn't stand with me he doesn't possess my life so we are now moving into the second stage the first stage is god is the giver of life god brings salvation to the broken world to the sinful world by sending his only son jesus to die on the cross to give all that of himself to bring forgiveness to the world to bring mercy to the world to bring healing and salvation to the world so the first stage god gives life and when man fell in sin when man loses the grace from god when man goes away from god god doesn't want him god doesn't leave him like that so he sends his only son before that he sent many prophets he present the kings he sent the priests and in the fullness of time he gave his only son jesus and then he established the mother church and through the church he continues to operate in us that we may join with the lord and bring forth the life of god to the lifeless 
and bring salvation to the world to those who are dying in sin in sickness in pain in suffering and that takes place by the anointing of the holy spirit that's why in luke 4:18 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me for what to bring the good news to the poor those who are trusting in the lord those who feel we are poor in ourselves without god good news for you when you realize that you have someone who can make you rich when you realize your life is rich only in him that is the moment god will anoint you that is the moment you become rich to the world and that is the call of god to be that's why in luke's gospel chapter 12 verse 21 it is written many people who are rich in the world they have not become rich in the lord so their life ends miserably they move towards the riches of this world riches means not only merely money to become big man in the world to achieve a big position in a society to have the riches of this world name and fame of this world he makes his own these are the tricks of the enemy and becoming a rich in the world very difficult to be rich in the lord what the lord can give us the holy spirit understanding knowledge wisdom courage faith hope love sacrifice all comes from god yes this beautiful life man cannot have so being rich in the world man if he is not rich in the lord his life will end up in misery that's what the lord said so those who don't stand with me they will become against me because those who don't search for me those who don't make me the aim the goal of their lives they find so many goals so many unwanted elements they become part of your life that's why god said your life your mind first corinthian chapter 3 verse 9 is compared to field and a building st paul compares our mind and our human life to a field or to the to the house a great house so what do you sow on this earth of your life you will reap if you don't sow the lord without your permission without even your knowledge the enemy will sow his seed your life is a field your mind is like a field we read in second corinthian chapter 4 verse 4 god of this age satan uses the mind of man to sow his seed yes and to corrupt our thinking corrupt our life yes god of this age is not happy with us so god of this age he sows the seed of corruption and destruction in our mind and he destroys our thoughts so if you don't in a field if you don't plow if you don't prepare if you don't sow seed if you don't plant paddy what will happen next year full of weeds and thorns that's what the bible says your life is a field your mind is a field if you don't sow the lord the enemy will be found in you 
if you don't prepare your mind to hunger for god to prepare your heart to love god the love of this world the lust of this world the sin of this world begin to operate in you begin to work in you destroy you take care of yourself